Okay, so we have our Kismet doing what it's supposed to do now. Uh, when we hit this trigger or touch this trigger, uh, we spawn a new pawn at this note, uh, a new pawn that we've called Bob. Now, um, when we shoot Bob with uh, the beam mode on our link gun, uh, we actually swap over and we become Bob and we leave our old body behind. But there was uh, one little thing in the last video that was uh, making me a little bit nervous, and I'll show you what that is. If we come in here and try to, and we spawn Bob and try to swap over to be Bob, you'll notice that took quite a lot of fire before we swapped over. In fact, if I come back and try again, you can see I shot him twice there and we haven't actually swapped over. Now, the reason for this is that Bob is a UT pawn. When we came in and uh, brought in our actor factory, uh, we had to choose a pawn class and UT pawn is uh, one of the few that actually works for this setup. So we chose UT pawn. Now, one of the attributes of a UT pawn is that when you spawn one in a level, it is invulnerable for the first round about five seconds of life. And so, um, during that five seconds of invulnerability, Bob won't take any damage, so we can't swap to Bob. If, once he's spawned in, we wait for those five seconds and then shoot him, we actually swap over and become Bob. I'll just do that again. You see, we have to wait for those five seconds to elapse. But as soon as they're gone, the swap is instantaneous. So this isn't a glitch, it's just a, um, it's a feature. Uh, it's actually a, um, a property of the uh, UT pawn that we used to bring Bob into the game. Uh, if you do, um, if you are worried about the player immediately trying to swap every time he uh, he spawns in, um, one way to get around that is perhaps you could have um, Bob spawn behind a protective barrier, and then the barrier lo lowers or raises. Um, after those five seconds have elapsed, just to give the player some idea that um, Bob is sort of uh, being reconstructed or beaming in. And so that's a way to, uh, to get around that issue. Now, the uh, main um, problem that I want to tackle in this lesson, um, and I'll just show you in game. Uh, firstly, I'll come to this take damage, and I'm just going to add a damage type going to set it to link plasma. This means that no matter which um, fire mode we shoot Bob with, we're going to swap over to Bob. And you can see, if I shoot him with the plasma, that we swap as well. And so uh, we don't just have to use the link beam. But the issue that we need to fix um, is, and I won't shoot him in this particular lesson, must be relieved, is um, now at the beginning of this ramp is where our player start is. If we add a bot to this level, the bot is going to enter in um, at that point. It's then going to look around for um, an available target, and the only available target it's going to see is Bob. So let's see what happens when we bring in a bot. Did you see what happened? When the bot spawns, it sees Bob. It shoots Bob with its uh, link gun. Now, when Bob takes damage, it the uh, game assumes, because we haven't told it otherwise, uh, that we want to swap characters. It doesn't matter whether we're doing the damage, or whether it's a bot doing the damage, or whether it's some laser in the level doing the damage. As long as the damage type matches up with whatever we've put here, 
it will fire the swap characters um, network that we've just uh, set up over here. And so if we don't want this to occur, we need to um, check to make sure that it's actually us that's firing the gun and applying the damage um, in order for the swap to occur. So to do that, I'm just going to select this and move this out the way a bit. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go down to New Condition, Comparison, Compare Objects. It's not very difficult to guess what Compare Objects does. Uh, when you fire this node, um, it compares Object A to Object B. If Object A equals Object B, uh, or is the same as Object B, it will fire off its first output. If the objects are not the same, if they're not identical objects, then it will fire off the second output, which we're not going to hook up. Now the objects that I want to compare are first the person who is dealing the damage or the, um, the instigator of this take damage event. So I'm going to create a new object variable on that instigator triangle, that output, and I'm going to plug that into object A. And object B, I'm just going to make that the player. Now, uh, when this pawn, this pawn, Bob, when Bob takes damage, uh, it's going to check who is doing the damage. Is the person doing the damage the same as the player? If it is the same as the player, so it's the player doing the damage, it will swap Bob and the player. You'll become Bob. If it isn't uh, the player who's actually shooting Bob, then nothing extra will happen. He'll still suffer the damage, but there won't be any kismet fired off from that. So let's see if that worked. First I'm going to make sure that the uh, network still works for us, and it does. Then I'm going to come in and see if it works for any bots that we add to the game. Nope. That bot's a really bad shot. Anyway, you'll notice that the bot managed to shoot um, Bob a number of times uh, and we didn't swap characters. This means that our kismet is working. It's um, checking to see who is actually uh, causing the damage to Bob and if it's the player, swap characters. If it's not the player, don't worry about it. Now, um, I might just come in here to the Actor Factory because every time Bob dies, we have something very impersonal come up on screen. Player something something has died. So I'm just going to make sure that his name is Bob. Just check that. And there we go, down the bottom in the green, and if we bring that up, Bob was served an extra helping of Monarch's Plasma. So now he is Bob. Now that may seem like a small issue, uh, just calling him Bob, but it is uh, going to become very important over the course of the next few lessons. Now uh, one thing you'll notice is that uh, we have this swap set up, but it's only one way. Bob can't become this character. He can't, uh, or you can't jump back into this character here. So uh, that's something that we'd like to be able to do as part of the game. So we'll set that up in the next lesson.